update to the Ringmaster 207. I'll give you a quick. Is that my paper? Give you a quick overview of the plans here. This. This is a half a plane. Uh, Pat Johnson does a lot of these ringmasters by the numbers of the square inches of the plane. So this is RM 207, 207 uh, squares on it. Uh, it's for 049 to 061s. We'll be running Cox TDs on these. Um, Pat Johnston is the designer of this. This is kind of a D-tube wing. We don't really, uh, we're not going to sheet the whole wing, or uh, excuse me, sheet the whole leading edge like a traditional D-tube. Uh, that way it'll give us the appearance of a stock, sort of a Ringmaster Junior look. These can be built flapped or non-flapped. I'm not positive yet which way I'll be building the one that we send out. I don't think the flaps are necessary on this. I think with a TD uh, 051 it has plenty of power and it has the plus P airfoil so it's not really a necessity. So uh, right now I'm not really prepared to do a lot uh, but I do want to give you guys an update as to what we're doing. So uh, right now I'm just making the kits first. I'm going to make about three or four kits out of the set of plans. Just going by the wood selection there's a couple key areas to pick up on. Uh, there's a couple things like on the the I-beam for the spar. If you can see there's a split right in the middle there. Um, I think even if I cut these out as a kit, I'm pretty sure I can mail this off with that being intact as one piece. That way a splice doesn't have to be made. Um, it's like 29, it's like 28 and 3 quarter inch spar. So if we just cut that out of a standard 16th inch, you know, sheet of balsa, we shouldn't have to make that two pieces at all. So we have, this is, this should be enough material in one this is a 4 by 36 inch 16 inch sheet. So that should be enough to cut the spar and tons of ribs. So two sheets of 16 inch should be fine. For the fuse, uh, if you cut out, I got a, a 4 inch sheet of quarter inch. So with the 4 inch sheet, it might be a little waste but it looks like we can get two fuselages out of a 36 inch sheet um, and being four inches tall it'll include the canopy and everything um, the elevator and the stabilizer are made a six pound eighth inch so green 
to it so this is not going to be the lightest I got so that should be pretty darn close to six pound um, being four inches we could easily cut the stab and the elevator three times out of one 36 inch sheet so that'll be good for us there now it says the uh, the doublers are actually just hard balsa like a heavier balsa so instead of it's a 16th inch hard balsa doubler you could probably get away with using something like a 32nd inch birch or something if you wanted to use ply instead of balsa for the doublers but I actually have some balsa, not that one. I mean, if you get if you get some balsa from like Michaels or something, you know that the stuff that says non-aircraft use, it's pretty good. It's reasonably light, but it's not something you'd want to use on your contest stuff. Well, that heavy stuff is good for. A situation like this where you need something heavier you could use light ply but I'm gonna I do have I think this is a good one I think this is some harder 16th inch so that's what I'll use for the doublers um, that's pretty much it uh, We're going to need a couple pieces of um, 16th inch ply, which we're going to cut a 16th inch ply horn. We're going to make a 16th inch ply bell crank mount and apply adjustable lead out slider on the outboard rib. Part of the scrap from the quarter inch fuselage uh, ply that we use. We're going to make our uh, wing tips. Our wing tips are actually hollow. See that? So the wing tip is just like a strip, the hollow strip. Pat Johnston does that a lot. And it really does save a lot of weight instead of it's easier to just cut out a slab and glue it on there than you have a lot of glue but by hollowing that out it's considerable weight savings and then on the inside on the inboard wing for our adjustable lead out slider um, the slider gets glued to the rib itself but then we just take and we're going to take a router and notch that out of a solid piece of uh, for the lines to go through. Oh. Yeah, here we go. This is that 16th inch piece I was looking for for the doublers. See, it's kind of a C grain. It's not really, not really something that you would want, but it'll work pretty good as uh, nose doublers for a TD. Um, well, we have probably enough wood right there to make two or three uh, short kits. The flaps are eighth inch flaps. We have enough eighth inch to use. This is, you know, they're either fixed flaps or functional flaps. Like I said, I haven't a hundred percent decided whether I want to use conventional flaps or just fix them. All of the Plus P airfoil planes I have fly amazing and turn better than most planes with flaps anyway. I have the the RM Plus P which is a standard S1 size. I have the RM645 Plus P, the RM800 Plus P, and uh, none of them have flaps. It's just the airfoil is so great they turn really sharp and you can't stall them. So, anyway, I just wanted to update everybody as to what we got going on here, and uh, 
one will be built to completion and uh, Gordon will be getting that um, we're, we have another kit a hand cut kit and don't worry these kits will come out very nice that would be sent out to a couple guys including uh, Sparky I'm gonna send you a kit hope you like it and uh, this is definitely you know an intermediate level aircraft for flying the pattern this will complete the full pattern with a TD and a 1.5 ounce tank this is gonna go no problem six seven minute flights so we should be pretty solid on this thing uh, tomorrow I'll get the scroll saw out and we'll start cutting the doublers and everything and then I'll show you how I'm going to make these uh, rib patterns real quick all the ribs are the same on a ringmaster it's a tapered trailing edge but the way this is set up it's a constant cord wing and the uh, the trailing edge or flap section is actually just an add-on so I'll show you that uh, it's pretty nice there's only three different rib shapes and we're going to make 16, 18, 19 ribs total. Um, yeah, so you got one in the middle and then uh, nine on each side. So, okay, let's get to it tomorrow and actually start making these kits. Thanks.